my name is Jennifer Perry. I am the Deputy Superintendent in the Cherry Creek School District. I want to welcome you tonight to our very first of six board candidate forums here at Overland High School. Before we get started though, because in Cherry Creek we always like to take it back to the children, <laughs> it is my absolute pleasure to introduce you to an amazing young woman named Madison Manning who is going to join us this evening and share some thoughts about her experience at Overland and how that has it impacted her life. So welcome Madison. Thank you. Hello, my name is Madison Manning. I am a senior here at Overland High School. And for the next few moments, I will, I will have the honor of sharing my accomplishments over my high school career with you. First off, I have a 4.0 GPA. I'm successful in AP concurrent enrollment and honors classes. I'm a part of the National Honor Society here at Overland. I am the vice president of the Thespian Officer Board and also a well-known leader in the performing arts department and on certain occasions, a choreographer for our productions. I'm a section leader in our mixed jazz choir, as well as the student director of Sicilians in our top mixed additioned group choir. In ninth grade, I was a varsity gymnast. And for four consecutive years in a row, I have been a varsity. I have been a varsity. Okay. I, and for four years in a row, I have been a varsity track and field athlete. And last year was named 16th fastest in the state for the 100 meter dash in 5A. And I've already gotten college scholarships because of said accomplishments. In ninth grade, which is a now a disbanded group, but I was a part of SALT, which is the student athletic leadership team. And I am one of Overland High School's representatives for SOAR, which is Students Organized Against Racism, which is an outreach program that does real-time research and training in courageous conversations across not only the district, state, but also the nation. I received state recognition at the annual state thespian competition at the Beale Theater. Out of hundreds of musical theater individual events, I was chosen to perform on main stage, receiving a Critics' Choice Award not once, but twice, and hopefully a third time this December, where I had the honor of representing Overland on stage and performing in front of thousands of people. I was second place in the Colorado State Shakespeare competition, and by invitation, I sang the national anthem at the Cherry Creek School District Gala of 2020 and the Martin Luther King Jr. honoring event at the Aurora Courthouse. And my most proud accomplishment that happened this summer was that I became Colorado's Distinguished Young Woman of the Year for 2022, which is a, a scholarship that is offered one girl from each state. The night of the competition, I won $5,000 for winning the fitness, talent, self-expression, and interview portions of the scholarship. And I will be representing Colorado at the 2020-2020 National Competition in Mobile, Alabama, where I have the opportunity of potentially being on TV and making more money for college. And from winning state alone, I was offered money from many colleges that are part of the program. But one of them, most notably, the work where I want to go, is Chapman University in Orange County, California, where I was offered a $128,000 scholarship. And it's not including what they will offer me for track and also ac my academics. One thing is for certain, I owe every accomplishment to this school. The well-rounded and passionate teachers and leaders at this school have aided me in honing my craft in not only academics and athletics, but in my passion for performing arts. The diverse environment also has shaped me into a better speaker, leader, and human being. While all the wonderful high schools in this district prepare you for college, I would argue that Overland prepares you for the world because frankly, the world looks like us. We are the leader of the pack in terms of change in the district. Some key examples of, of that would be our implementations of SOAR and ethnic studies as a class. Our students and staff have so much to offer because we have insight on how to interact, work with, and represent various groups of people. Because of that, I'm so thank thankful for this school, but most, most notably, Overland High School's Performing Arts Department for shaping me into the woman I am today who is standing before you. And because of them, at first, I was not going to pursue performing arts past high school, but I am now wanting to go to Chapman University and double major, getting a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree in filming and theater acting and minoring in musical theater and production. Overland has changed my life for the better. And by that, I mean it showed me that a young black woman's voice and accomplishments matter and are worth celebrating. Thank you. Thank you. 
Thank you, Ms. Madison Manning. Unbelievable. We are so blessed when we have events like this to be able to hear from students like Madison and all the others just like her. Uh, another note of business before we start to eat uh, this evening, as you know, um, being part of Arapahoe County, our schools are under a mask mandate. All individuals on school property must be wearing a mask. That includes our audience as well as the members uh, candidates on stage. The candidates will not be allowed to remove their masks while answering questions, and so I just want to prepare you for that. To everyone here, I want to thank you tonight for attending this very important event and taking the time to make an informed decision regarding the future leadership of the Cherry Creek School District. Tonight is a community forum where candidates from the Board of Education uh, for Director Districts D and E will have an opportunity to introduce themselves to you and answer questions that are of interest to our community. Each candidate will introduce themselves and respond to a round of quick questions. Community questions will also be asked. Timers on stage will help the candidates watch their time. Every forum is being recorded and will be posted on the district website the next day. We ask that as candidates respond, the audience reacts appropriately and that we show respect to these individuals who have stepped forward as willing volunteers for this very important leadership role. Prior to this evening, each candidate was provided the opportunity to respond to six informational questions which are posted on the district website under the Board of Education Candidate Forum tab. I encourage you all to learn more about each person after tonight's forum. So tonight, we are gonna start. Each candidate will have two minutes to introduce themselves and share why they are interested in being on the Board of Education. Today, we're going to start to my right and move down the line. So we will start with Ms. Shemay Navarro. Hi, yes, my name is Shemay Navarro. I'm a mother of three and I'm running for Cherry Creek School District, seat D. Um, I'm passionate about parents having a voice in these, uh, in these spaces. I think that we need to utilize um, their opinion in, in all the decisions that we make. And uh, I wasn't seeing that happening. And so I think it's important to have that voice be utilized um, on the, in the school board. So that is why I'm running. Thank you. There. Ms. Navarro, thank you so much, and I'd ask you to pull your mask over your nose. Next, we will move to Ms. Jen Gibbons. Hello, I'm Jen Gibbons. I'm a mother of four, and I've lived in the district for over 15 years. I'm a doctor of audiology, and I'm a founder of, and the current board president of Heritage Heights Academy. I'm passionate about education. I'm passionate about keeping Cherry Creek, the excellent district that we moved into and that it is today. I've worked with other parents in the district and our amazing principal at HHA to create choice within Cherry Creek that was not offered on the eastern side of the district where I live. I could have easily taken my children to a charter school that was offered in Douglas County where they have many. But since Cherry Creek Academy, the only charter, charter school in the district had a wait list of over 3,400 students, I thought it merited development of a new charter school in our district. So we worked together and we made an amazing school. When I first started this process and I met with Harry Bull, the superintendent at the time, he said something that I'll never forget and I take it, take it with me every time I've met with anyone. He said, it's important to remember when you come to meetings with these that you remember we all have the same desire in our hearts. And that is to help our kids be successful and to find common ground. And I've remembered that and that stuck with me. And I think we can find common ground in everything that we do. So tonight I come here with the, the knowledge that we all have the same desire in our heart and that we um, all want our kids to succeed. And um, we have a lot of common ground that we can find. Um, and that's all. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Ms. Gibbons. And now we'll move to Ms. Kelly Bates. Thank you. I'm Kelly Bates. I am a mother of five graduates from Cherokee Trail, from Cherokee, Cherry Creek Schools, I'm sorry. Um, four of them did graduate from CT, the other from Grandview. Um, 17 years ago, my family moved here and I jumped right in and became a volunteer in our district. I have served on PASS, DAC, Safety and Security Task Force, any number of um, committees within our district. Four years ago, I was elected to this position. During that time, I have been able to oversee the passing, along with Ms. Fisher, the passing of uh, 4A and 4B with a 
approval rating. So um, during this time, we've also approved the building of two new um, school-based health care centers, and we're looking forward to our new day treatment facility as well. During my time on the board as well, I was able, I was proud to say that we worked along with the schools to keep our students in school during COVID. Uh, we were able to keep our students in. We also began offering testing and vaccination clinics uh, for our students and our community, student staff and community. Our district is a world leader in uh, career and technical education. We have built CCIC since I have been on this board. We are being looked at as a model for our mental health facility, a worldwide model for um, this type of facility. So as you can see, I am pa passionate about the whole child. I want to continue to make sure our children are safe, healthy, supported, engaged, and challenged. And I will continue to do this. It is difficult, but I will continue to do the work. Thank you, Ms. Bates. Now, Dr. Lester. Well, behold how good and how pleasant it is for all of us to be here this evening. My name is Dr. Jason H. Lester, but please feel free to call me Jason. The reason I'm here is because I have an eight-year-old boy at home. He has special needs, and he's believing in a school board that is going to represent him. I sit here proudly and tell you that black lives matter. I sit here proudly and tell you that if you trust me with your vote, I will get the job done. I will get on the ground and get to running. This will be the absolute best school district, not only in the state of Colorado, but definitely on this side of the Mississippi. You will not just see me knocking on your door and asking for your vote. You will see me in your grocery stores. You'll see me at the movies. And you know you'll see me at Popeye's because I want, you, I want to hear from you. And I want to hear how are we doing. I am not here for my own aggrandizement. I am not here because this is easy. I am here because all of our students in the Cherry Creek School District matter. And if given the chance to serve, you will see what it is that I'm saying. Tomorrow starts with us today. Thank you, Dr. Lester. And now to Bill Leach. Thank you. Bill Leach, uh, candidate for Boundary Area E, Cherry Creek School District. Uh, I'm running for a variety of reasons. One, the first and foremost, I want to give back to the district. Uh, my six kids in the district Four of them are still in high school. Two of them have already graduated. And they've all had outstanding, wonderful uh, experiences in, in Cherry Creek School District. I'm really at a point in my personal and professional life that, uh, that, I, that I have the time to dedicate to this job and, and give it the, the, the respect and, and time that it deserves. Uh, I, have a, I have a pretty good background. I, am, I served as uh, six years as a county commissioner, so I, I know uh, budgeting, you know, how to, how to uh, live within a budget, how to answer to an audit according to that budget. I've, uh, my years of county commissioner, I learned, you know, collaboration, consensus building, things like that, because a good board should never agree on every single thing, every single time. But with good collaboration and consensus building, there, there should be some good, some good uh, ways to get to, the, to get to a final answer. Uh, there are some other things. Um, there is some concern in the district right now with a variety of other, you know, say masking, curriculum, training, security, and a lot of other things like that. I will bring a lot of effort, resolve, results, and, and, and that's going to be my main goal as a, as a board candidate. So uh, I look forward to meeting a lot, of, a lot more of you folks. I know we, we did uh, 10,000 cards out at back-to-school nights, and that was a real, a real pleasure. Anytime I, we had multiple nights, I deferred over to the schools that I would never have gotten to, and I met albeit briefly, a lot of folks that, uh, that, that and that was an, a really wonderful experience. So again, thank you, Bill Leach. Thank you, Mr. Leach. And now for Ms. Kristen Allen. It should just go, Kristen. <laughs> Good evening. 
My name is Kristen Allen and I am running for the Cherry Creek School District Board of Education, Director District E. I would like to thank the board, district leadership, Mrs. Sibyl, Sibyl Booker and Overland High School for hosting this event. It is an honor to be sitting here today. I am an attorney, small business owner, and an engaged parent of two kids in Cherry Creek Schools. I have a proven commitment to CCSD through my years of service. When my oldest, Addison, started kindergarten, I began volunteering on her school accountabilities committee and then the district accountability committee. I am now the chair of both. I am a graduate of Leadership Cherry Creek class of 2020. In law school, I discovered my passion for service. That passion and commitment to service was directed toward children when my daughter started kindergarten. It was then, when I was volunteering in our classroom so our kindies could practice reading, I realized my daughter was not experiencing those aha moments. The road ahead was long and challenging. When we took our daughter to get more specialized testing, we learned that she had dyslexia, math decoding issues, and, ex and executive functioning challenges, as well as learning anxiety. Addison is now on track and I am so proud of her, but I also found myself asking these questions. What about the other kids? whose caretakers do not know what questions to ask or whether they may ask them or are afraid to ask them? What about the other kids who, whose caretakers cannot afford both in finances and time to navigate that maze? How do we expand our legacy of excellence to provide opportunities for all of our students to learn, to achieve, to care? This is my purpose, my why, this cause so much bigger than myself. We live in such a diverse district where the type of, one school, of school one goes to is heavily dependent on the zip code in which they live. Our belie I believe our district can provide a top education to all of our children, no matter their back code. And no matter their zip code. Thank, you. thank you, Mrs. Allen. All right. Thank you, everyone, for sharing uh, your why tonight as to why you've decided to run for the Board of Education. This next round is a quick question round. For quick questions, I will read a series of statements. If you agree with the answer or the answer to the statement is yes, you'll raise your hand. If you disagree or the answer is no, you'll leave your hand down. At the end, you'll have one minute to expand on or explain your answers. Okay, ready? All right, the first question. I have received campaign donations from organizations or political parties, not individuals, outside of Colorado? Question two, I have received campaign contributions from Colorado-based organizations or political parties, again, not individuals. Before I announced my candidacy, I attended at least three Cherry Creek Board of Education meetings in the last 12 months to understand the role and responsibility of the job I am seeking. I believe that the Cherry Creek School District is responsible for teaching all children regardless of need or any other factor. I support periodically raising taxes to continue the long history of investing in safe, healthy, and innovative school buildings. And the last one for the quick round tonight, I believe that teachers and other district employees are underpaid. All right, we're gonna have one minute to clarify, expand on, or explain your answers. And this time we will start down here with Ms. Kristen Allen. Thank you. Um, in clarification to the first question, I, I have received funds from our uh, Cherry Creek Education Association. I am proud to support teachers. They are the backbone of what we're doing at Cherry Creek. They are the the reason our schools are excellent. They are the boots on the ground living experience of making our policies come to life. And then in response to uh, the school board visits, I had great opportunities to attend every school board meeting and study session and district level meeting uh, beginning in January of 2021 with the exception of I think one meeting. And through that experience, I have had the opportunity to learn the ins and outs of how the board works. And, uh, and my respect for the board and leadership is tremendous because of that. Thank you, Ms. Allen. Mr. Leach. 
Yes, uh, just like Jason and I were just chatting, the, the fundraising part of, of this is, is difficult and it's expensive and it's grassroots in our case for sure, literally grassroots fundraising. And uh, one of the other things, uh, I would 100% I would vote for and support any type of, uh, of, of ways to get more resources into the schools, get re more resources into the, the uh, hands of the teachers including pay, benefits, et cetera. I literally am one of you. I'm a state employee and I have, I'm a recipient of PARA. In the, you know, I have over 10 years with the state right now and PARA is, is my retirement plan just like every other teacher in the district. And I've, I have uh, said before, at any point in time after I'm elected, I will be at the state capitol advocating vehemently on behalf of the teachers, the actual teachers. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Leach. Now, Dr. Lester. When it comes to raising taxes, I think that that is something that we have to do in order to continue to safeguard our future. So the reason why I am in support of sometimes paying a little bit more in taxes is because our teachers definitely deserve to have more funds, but also those funds cater to pro-social activities meaning that the hours from 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. are very, very critical, especially in, in all of our kids' lives. So I am so in favor of us always having enough money to do innovative and great things. All right. Thank you, Dr. Lester. Uh, Ms. Bates. Thank you. Um, I, too, um, did not raise my hand for raising funds from um, committees inside the state of Colorado. I was offered money from our Cherry Creek Education Association. I at first did not accept that money, but when I realized that we were going to have a race this time and I was actually gonna have to put in a major campaign, I decided to accept that money. I have always been a supporter of teachers. I support children first and then teachers. I also believe I want to say that I believe in educating every one of our children, whether it is based on their race, gender, uh, family, anything, special needs, GT, I believe in educating all children. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ms. Bates. Ms. Gibbons? Just like Bill said, our, we even combined together for this campaign so that we could share resources. Um, and as far as taxpayer dollars, and uh, I've always been a responsible steward for taxpayers' dollars. I understand how serious it is. When I was PTCO president at Black Forest Hills for three years, I understood how important taxpayers' dollars was and how to treat that money responsibly. Um, so any money that people have allotted me for this campaign has come from my mom and my dad who believe in me, my family and my friends, and parents around our neighborhood who believe in me too. Um, I've been attending board meetings since 2006 when I moved here. I was always interested in the board. I have a dear loved family member who died recently of COVID unfortunately, but he served on a, a board of education and I always admired him and wanted to do that. Um, all kids, of course, need to be educated. I don't know why that was a question. And um, I, if you look at my voting at HHA, I always voted to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Gibbons. Uh, Ms. Navarro. Yes, um, I believe that teachers need to be supported completely. Um, and I believe that finances, finances should, be, should go directly to the classroom um, versus uh, administration and issues of, of that sort. Um, I, I firsthand know how difficult it is with taxing um, the community and I think that that really needs to be thought um, well thought out and and if 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 our schools aren't providing a product as in a, a child with a, a you know able to read able to to do all of the things that they need to do um, in life and if we aren't producing that kind of um, I'm, I'm in the industry of, of products like you we aren't providing the them with the skills that they need to go further in life. So at that point, I kind of think we need to pause and kind of make sure we see that we're giving money appropriately to teachers and hiring appropriately or firing appropriately. Thank you, Ms. Navarro. All right, that ends our quick round questions for this evening. Thank you. I know that is kind of a <laughs> impromptu question. It's hard to ask. 
answer sometimes. Now we're going to proceed to our audience questions. The first couple questions were pre-selected from various parent and leadership groups. The rest will be from this audience. As you saw on your way in, we collected questions from the audience. Staff members have grouped common questions for tonight's purposes. For each question, the candidates will have one minute to respond. As a side note, there are questions that I am only going to ask to Director District D or Director District E. We are going to try to, in this next hour, have the opportunity to answer as many questions as we can so that you can hear their answers and make your most appropriate choice. So the very first question. State law and long-held district policy identify three primary roles for the Board of Education. Please identify which of those primary roles is your align with your strengths and how you will seek guidance and support so that you may ultimately provide meaningful contributions in all three areas. So I'm going to hold for just a second. See them taking notes. So of the three primary identified roles, which do you identify with in strengths and how will you get guidance and support to ultimately provide meaningful contribution in all three areas? We are going to start this question with Director District D, and we will start with Ms. Kelly Bates. Thank you. Um, of the three roles of the um, Board of Education, I believe hiring the superintendent is um, my strength of the three. Um, so of those three, under my, uh, myself and my colleagues, we have hired two superintendents in the last four years. So we have gone to our community. We have talked to them, asked what they would like to see in a superintendent. And I will seek the support of community and staff and talking of those, talking about those people. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Bates. Mrs. Gibbons. I would say that my strengths would be um, um, looking at policy, editing and reviewing policy. Um, I have experience doing that at Heritage Heights Academy. Um, we've, every month we go through and we review uh, part of our policy. And we've been able to keep that really organized. Um, and I, I, you know, as, a, as the board, our one employee is the superintendent. And that's I mean, I was supposed to say how we get support, but that's another strength <laughs> that I have. Um, I have been able to maintain an excellent relationship with our principal for the last six years. Um, I understand how important that is to maintain an ongoing dialogue with, the, with your primary CEO or head of school or whatever it is for a board of director to have that one employee and have a very strong trusting relationship. Um, and I, I also know how to find resources when I, when I need them for the other roles. Okay. Thanks, Mrs. Gibbons. Ms. Navarro? Um, I think the policy aspect is important. I think that having a uh, voice of, of like the families, like I continue to say, is, is a relevant space in those. We've been seeing this last little bit how policies are being made without taking into, um, without giving enough thought and having enough, um, you know, input from the community. And I think being an advocate for the voice of families in those spaces would be, would be of, of service to, to help our kids, to help our families, to make it a unified space for, for all. All right, I do have a different question for Director District E. <laughs> so I will read this one for you. Uh, Cherry Creek is about all 55,000 students and their individual success. And your job would be to represent every single one of them regardless of whether your values and beliefs align or not. Please share with the audience what you have done to prepare yourself to learn about and support students fully regardless of race, ethnicity, religion, gender, or sexual orientation. Please provide specific examples. I know it's a long one, so as you're making notes for yourself, I'll just highlight it. Our job is to support all kids, so what are you going to do to help educate yourself and learn about 
reporting or supporting all students regardless of race, ethnicity, religion, gender, or sexual orientation. And this time we will start with Dr. Lester. So it's understood that I, if given the honor to serve on this board, I will be there for all of the students. And to cement this notion, what I've had the privilege of doing is going door to door and getting to know the folks in my neighborhood. And specifically, what I've learned is that uh, we have more in common with one another than you think. For instance, my next door neighbor, Adam, and his family of seven moved in, and I walked up to him and I said, hey, I need to get your signature to run for the school board. And he was like, well, why would you want to do that? And I said, well, because I want to make things better. And sitting and talking with him, it was best understood to me that he, that, that Cherry Creek Schools represents for all of his kids. And, and also talking with him, his older kids appreciated the new opportunities that the younger kids were going to be there. I'll be there to listen regularly. Okay, thank you, Dr. Lester. Mr. Leach. Yes, um, as we were, were at a meeting last night, and again, another one last Friday morning, there's a, a bunch of data out there on, on this, the, the achievement gap. My ideas are to take that achievement gap and, and dig down deeper. There's got to be some other variables in there. In fact, um, somebody that, that just really impressed me over the last couple of meetings was uh, Director Garland. She's a very genuine person and, and is very uh, interested in some of those solutions, as am I. Let's dig deeper into those numbers. She said uh, free, and free and reduced lunch is not the only variable. I agree. Let's get into those numbers, find out where those, where those weak, weak spots are, and then add that to our um, upcoming, it's the, uh, called the student-based policy, uh, student-based finance, formerly known, I think it was equity-based finance uh, and stuff, but student-based finance. Take those numbers and add that into wh where those where those holes are in that achievement gap. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Mr. Leach. I almost gave you a doctorate there. <laughs> uh, extra points, uh, Miss Allen. I think I start. I started began preparing for this role when I recognized what my why was. My why in thinking about what about all of the other kids that I talked about earlier, and in, in particular over the past um, since December. I started what I call my listening and learning tour because I believe before one can lead, they must listen and learn. I spent a lot of time thinking about equity as this, this aligns with CCSD's policy on equity dating back to 2000 and recently revised. C CCSD's uh, first core value is equity. And what I learned during my 20 hours uh, a week of tours, meeting with teachers and superintendents and former superintendents and board members, is that all kids suffer if students come to school hungry and unwell. All kids suffer if some kids feel unseen and do not see themselves in history. Yeah, the mic cuts when the timer goes off, so <laughs> sorry about that. Yep, yep. <laughs> All right, uh, our first audience question, and this time I am going to start with Director District E, and we will start with Mr. Lester in the middle, so that he's not always being, I mean, Dr. Mr. Leach in the middle. I've got doctors and Lesters and Leeches. I'm mis mixing them all up, but we'll start with Mr. Leach in the middle. Uh, so it says, do you believe that students should have a voice or input in district decisions that impact their education? If so, how would you support that? Sorry. Yes, absolutely. Students should have. They're, they're the, they are other than the teachers. They're the boots on the ground. They're the ones that are going through the classes. They're the ones that are that are have the ultimate end goal of graduating and and moving on to that next phase of their life, be it college, be it uh, the workforce, or uh, you know volunteer, Peace Corps, uh, AmeriCorps, any of those things. I think that's an excellent idea to, to get input from students and, and student senates, probably in, we're talking middle school and, 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 and high school levels and higher. I can't imagine elementary school kids uh, dictating their curriculum to, uh, <laughs> to the district, but uh, there, there's some really, really, really smart kids and, and, and engaged kids at all these area high schools, and there's uh, no reason at all why they shouldn't have a, a, a little say in what's going on at the, at the district level of curriculum, hiring. Uh, clubs, activities, et cetera. 
Thank you, Mr. Lester. Mrs. Allen? I believe students should have a voice in, in their Lester. education. And I believe that Cherry Creek acknowledges this and uplifts this through their um, strategic plan of pathways of purpose. Every child in this school district is, is or should be afforded uh, participation in the decisions that will, will give them direct the direction that they need in their life. And Cherry Creek is actively working on trying to reach, uh, reach this mission. And in order to figure out what kids want to do, they need to be part of that decision-making process. I've seen this happen at um, the, CCI, the CCIC school, and I've seen it happen in the IB programs, and I've even seen it happen when children are advocating for a class that otherwise um, perhaps they, they wouldn't have been in had they not spoken up and said, I want to be in that AP class, and I deserve it, and here's why. We need those voices as Thank you, Mrs. Allen. Uh, Dr. Lester? I remember being in the first grade at Chapel Hill Elementary, and they were building a brand new middle school right next door. And they asked all of us, all the students that were there, what do you want the name of the new school to be? Well, of course, they named it Chapel Hill Junior High. Well, however, I thought Jason Lester Middle School would have sounded better in the first grade. I think that we definitely have to include students and decisions that are being made. Moreover, it should be on candidates to do their best job to engage students to hear to, so that we can understand what is the pulse on the ground. So when it comes to, it's, it's their future, and basically they have a right to share where we should go or what their perspectives are, and those perspectives should be and must be respected. Thank you, Dr. Lester. Uh, we will now move on to a different question for Director District D. As a school board candidate, how would you expect the district administration to respond to students or staff who actively participate in illegal or violent activities? And as we did on the other side, we will start in the middle with Ms. Gibbons. Sure. As a uh, school board candidate, how would you expect the district administration to respond to students or staff who actively participate in illegal or violent activities? Well, um, I would expect anyone to respond the same way anyone should if there are illegal or violent activities. Anyone who is there is, is responsible and accountable and needs to stop that activity and support the person if there is a person who is being attacked or, or whatever that is. Um, as a candidate, I've never worried about um, anything happening to me specifically, so I don't know if this is what the question is about, but if uh, I appreciated the way that the superintendent and the staff acted when um, even at the board meeting, I was part, I was lucky to sit in with the study session and they had um, things in place. If, if anything were to happen, they're very well prepared. So um, I have really a lot of trust in the superintendent and their staff to, to do whatever they need to do if there's anything illegal or violent happening. Thank you. Mrs. Navarro? Yeah, so I uh, think it's appropriate to bring accountability to those, uh, to everybody involved, whether it's um, students or teachers, anything, it, whether it's outside of the school hours or just after. Um, I've heard multiple stories of, of situations that happen that are um, violent or illegal activity that really honestly gets shoved under the, the rug and, and is not a, a dealt with appropriately. Um, and if that's due to having numbers below for certain problem, for certain um, statistics, I think that that's a problem because I think it needs to be accountable. Uh, I think the best thing that happens for a student is to, you know, get 
I, I do think it's it, it's a value to get in trouble. You know, you learn a lot of lessons from messing up and, and figuring out life and those things. And so I think accountability all throughout would be my, how I'd approach it. Thank you. Mrs. Bates. Thank you. Um, I believe, I, I'm assuming this is um, during school hours. Um, and if it is during school hours, after school hours is a little bit different. But during school hours, um, I would expect that if it is a violent act, um, not necessarily an unlawful act, but if it's a violent act, I would expect our SROs. Well, first of all, I would expect our um, saf safety and security team to get involved and then take them to our um, staff, our counselors, or whoever to, to work on some restorative justice for our students. We need to find out why these things are happening and what we can do and work together to resolve these issues. If it is an unlawful act, then I believe we also need to, um, we need to, to have our SROs uh, talk about that. And then we need to, if, if it comes to that, we have to follow the policies and go to a, um, sorry, a uh, <laughs> termination of their schooling. Okay. Thank you, Mrs. Bates. I uh, we'll have a new question for Director District E. We will start with Dr. Lester on this one. What do you know and understand about collaboration between the district and the Cherry Creek Educator Association? What I know is that the Cherry Creek Education Association um, is there to provide the district with recommendations, recommendations on a whole host of various ideas uh, and specifically recommendations with regard to budget decisions and how sometimes um, recommendations on how to move forward and infusing equity within the school district. So there is a strong relationship with the Cherry Creek Education Association and essentially the Education Association is there to be a voice for the district and to support the parents, the faculty, the parents, the students, the faculty and the staff. Thank you Dr. Lester. Mr. Leach? Just to be clear that is the Teachers Union, correct? Yes. Okay. Uh, that is actually one of the one of the things I wanted to touch on tonight is I don't think that the teachers union uh, should be the de facto uh, hiring agency for school boards. I really don't think that's the that's the true uh, uh, role of the school board, and that's what they've very very much become over the over the past year several years. We're we're We've gotten to the point where the teachers union picks a candidate, backs the candidate, and expects everybody to just follow suit. And again, that's probably one of the reasons why I'm setting up here today as a candidate, is as much as I love the teachers and have dozens of teachers in my contact list and can, can call on those folks as a, as a resource, uh, I just don't think the union needs to be involved in the school board races. It's a, it's a conflict, big time conflict. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Leach. Ms. Allen? During the past year when I was reaching out to the community, part of what I did was reach out to uh, Brenda Smith and Casey Ellis. And Casey Ellis is the, uh, is, is the president of the, C of the Teachers Association. And I didn't do that to get her endorsement. What I did was to talk to her. I wanted to talk to her about the working relationship between Cherry Creek School District and the Teachers Union. And what I found was that there is an incredible collaboration between the union leadership and the board. And I realized that all, all of these different parts that make up Cherry Creek um, are collaborators. And I know that we are all in this for the kids and we are doing this for the right reasons. Uh, we also have common enemies such as the state budget and people who want to fo focus on politics instead of kids. Uh, I think that um, the CCEA leadership <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Allen. All right, uh, we are going to now move to Director District D. We will start down with Ms. Shimane Navarro. Uh, last night at the board meeting, the Office of Equity and Culture made a compelling presentation about ongoing disparity outcomes for students of color across the district. How would you, as a board member, actively advocate 
for increased equitable outcomes in the following areas. Student achievement, implicit bias, and discipline. I'll say that one more time. So how would you, as a board member, actively advocate for increased equitable outcomes in the areas of student achievement, implicit bias, and discipline rates? Okay, so as uh, you know, a, I was a student that came into Cherry Creek School District out of di out of the um, district because of my because I was Hispanic, and they needed to fill a quota. So I feel like I lived this exactly, and I I really benefited from the individualized uh, approach that. Cherry Creek School District did to me even before there was, you know, d d uh, equity and inclusion training. Um, I think that if we look at each child as an individual, we can really help and support them. I think basing anything off of a, a broad brush is, is a disservice to our, our kids that, um, you know, come from different backgrounds. Um, in terms of student achievement and, and that gap that we always talk about, I think something that doesn't come into play is that, you know, some people have a different skill set than, than academics. I was Thank you, Ms. Navarro. Uh, Ms. Gibbons? So with achievement, at Heritage Heights Academy, we boast 54% uh, of the kiddos are, are diverse. And we have 100% of some of our classes that have proficient or above achievement. So I think that needs to be looked at. What is Heritage Heights Academy doing? Um, I, I believe that we can get parent involvement and community involvement and have a child buy-in. Um, those are the things that if you Google, you can see what closes the achievement gap. It's that can-do attitude. It's that child, parent, community involvement that can really close that. I would love to see Mr. Giles mentioned even that in his, in his um, presentation that he would like to involve more parents and community, which I think is wonderful. Um, the implicit bias, uh, at HHA we do a bias training. Like look at a child, why can't little Johnny write his name? Is it because he's a boy? I think it's imperative and, and terribly important that teachers examine their biases. Um. Okay, thank you, Ms. Givens and Ms. Bates. Thank you. Um, I believe I would, um, in terms of closing the achievement gap, I believe we should, um, as we are leaning toward student-based budgeting, I think that will help with some of this achievement gap. Um, we will be able to put funds into our schools, into our students who need more resources. So I, um, I believe in that. I also believe in, um, in an implicit bias, how we need to change that. I believe in the um, equity work that our team has been working on. I have taken part in the um, Courageous Conversations. So I would continue working on that, continue on training our staff. And then for discipline rights, I wanna look at um, more restorative justice for our students rather than um, just jumping in and giving students tickets or whatever that happens to be. We need to look at who the students are who are getting these um, fines and whatever. All right, this next question is a big one. It's actually two parts, so I'm gonna ask everybody across the stage um, so that you can weigh in on both questions. In the last year, we have seen district, the district tasked with navigating a pandemic and racial and social injustice issues. First question, what have you appreciated about the district's approach to navigating these issues and what would you have done differently And the second question is, what do you understand about the board's role in navigating these challenges? All right, I'll say those quick again, just so you can catch all the words. What, have, what do you appreciate about the district's approach to navigating these issues and what would you have done differently? And then what do you understand about the role of the board in navigating these uh, challenges? 
We will start on this far side as we did earlier, but we will start with Ms. Kristen Allen. Over the past year, while um, we went through this pandemic, I think that CCSD uh, did a great job in pushing for food service and staying in school as long as possible until it was no longer safe to do so and getting our students back in school as quickly as possible once it was safe to do so. I know that there are lots of co complaints recently about lack of communication and transparency, but I think the opposite is true when it comes to the pandemic. We knew exactly what to expect and why as we received weekly updates from our superintendent. In terms of the racial um, injustices we, f we faced, I think the district also did a very good job of addressing and helping our children cope with the uh, January 6th insurrection through the, giving the teachers the tools they needed to help navigate their students through this project. Thank you. And now Mr. Uh, Leach. Yes, uh, I agree the, the district did, a, did an outstanding job. If, if we remember back, um, you know, hindsight's always a wonderful thing, but we remember back, this thing was a, a living, breathing, moving thing that was changing almost daily and for sure but weekly. The district did an outstanding job of communicating testing sites and later vaccination sites. It did an excellent job of, of giving the information to the parents on this is the number of kids that, had, that have had COVID. And this is, again, at the elementary school level, middle school level, and high school level, which we had, we had middle school and high schoolers. And, and also, the, here's a number of, of people in the cohorts that are, that are going to be out. I, I think the, uh, the Board of Education in, in that role was, uh, did, did, a, did an outstanding job of, of coordinating with the district and with the superintendent. As he, you know, Superintendent Siegfried at the time did, the, they did an outstanding job of, of making sure that that stuff was all communicated well to the parents because it was a it was things happening really really fast if we remember right. Thank you, Dr. Lester. With regard to the racial matters, I'm pleased with the district's approach in the uh, Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Office. These folks are showing up in the community and listening. And not only are they listening, they're going back to the district and trying to make the best changes that they can make. Um, I was especially uh, pleased with that. Also, being a proud autism dad, I am pleased with the special education department and the many efforts that they've made to sometimes give uh, the teachers and, and specialists sometimes given extra hours and extra time to try and ensure that our kids' needs were met. Nobody has a uh, crystal ball, and I believe that COVID will be around for a while. And I think that, you know, looking back, maybe we should have embraced, you know, trying to, you know, be more safer. But in all, I think that Cherry Creek School District has done a great job nav navigating these crucibles. Thank you. Mrs. Bates? Thank you. Um, during this last year, year and a half, I believe that the district has done a fantastic job managing, um, the, especially the pandemic. Um, we were able to have our kids in school. We were the only school district that started on time last year and kept our kids in school as much as we possibly could. So I believe um, the district has been doing that well. In terms of um, the racial injustices, I am proud to say that we have now um, actually have a full department, our equity, culture, and community engagement department, rather than just being a small entity, has now become a full department where we can get out into the community, into our schools, and we can talk about those things there. Um, and I was, I was very pleased with the communication regarding um, when we did have murders of black men and we had the insurrection, I was pleased with the communication that we received. All right. Thank you. Ms. Gibbons? Over the pandemic, we were all very worried and having, um, I know that in my family, we were worried about getting masks out and we were, you know, huddled in our, in our house. How do we, uh, HHA, we have a food bank. How do we get food out to these people? So I sent an email quickly out to the district and was very heartened to know that they, they are taking care of it and they were on top of it. So I thought that was, that was amazing. Um, I loved the rubric that the, the district 
uh, developed so that we could see exactly what we're up against. Um, exactly how many people were getting sick and hospitalized in the district I th or in the uh, county. I thought that information was very helpful. As far as the social justice, uh, that was just a tricky time and everyone was torn. I would have liked to have seen more, uh, more getting together, more kumbaya moments, if you will, um, more finding that common ground. Um, there was too much, there's too much division, there's too much disagreement. We need to find some more common Okay, thanks, Ms. Givens. Ms. Navarro. Uh, so the question was, how? what have you seen appropriate and what would you change? Um, I did also like the stats that were given. That was helpful. And I think it was, it helped uh, parents make some understanding on, on how to navigate these, uh, what was going on. Uh, I, I was actually, I lost my job because of the pandemic. And so the food aspect that happened um, that the district handed out was was an awesome service. My kids loved it. Um, and that was very helpful. I found, we found that very helpful. Um, what I would do differently with the pandemic, especially in coming into this year, I think that um, we need to always take an individualized approach to how we uh, mandate things and, and the way we are uh, looking at exemptions. You know, not everybody has disabilities that you can see start like straight up um, I actually suffer from a traumatic like su a suffocation issue and this is this is hard for me and I we're not caring about that okay thank you Ms. Navarro all right we're going to have just a couple more questions and then I do think we'll have time for two minutes to wrap up but a couple more questions and then we will wrap this up at right about eight o'clock um, this particular question I'm going to direct to director district E so pick one of the core values identified by the superintendent. Whole well-being, relationships, equity, engagement, or growth mindset, and talk about what it means to you. For this particular question, we will start in the middle again with Mr. Leach, um, when he has a, just a second to, sure. Pick one of the core values identified by the superintendent, whole well-being, relationships, equity, engagement, and growth mindset and talk about what it means to you. Okay. Um, yeah, I didn't get to touch on equity a little bit in the last question, so I'll touch on it on this. And I, uh, I have the, the privilege of working on a, at a state agency that's a development agency as well. So I have a, of a, a vast, broad array of, of worldwide uh, people from all over the world that I work with on a daily basis. I'm on the operations side, and I've got a unique perspective into the uh, different communities, different, uh, different cultures, different ways of, of, ways of life for all, all the folks. And how that relates to equity is I believe that the, the equity portion of, you know, say even the curriculum that, that, is, that is being uh, introduced is, is going to be an important part for all of our students to learn as they enter the workforce and hopefully can get into jobs like mine where quite literally I'm the unicorn. I seldom talk to a, a, a straight white male at my office. I am simply at, at a... All right, thank you. Um, we will kick it now to Dr. Lester. Okay, um, hearing um, the choices, I believe that um, uh, there has to be now, a, uh, more so than ever, a focus on equity. Um, we have got to look at what's needed for people that don't have what they need. We've got to focus on what's needed. And I believe that the best thing that will happen when we focus on equity is that it will lead to lasting relationships. When we focus on equity, essentially what we're doing is creating a great sustainability plan for relationships. Not just regular relationships, but trusting relationships where people that have been disenfranchised, people that have been overlooked, and people that have went through many struggles can now find a sense of pride and feel that they're heard and that their needs are being met. Thank you, and Ms. Allen. I'll also talk about equity as I believe equity is necessary for all of our core values. 
Equity means there is not one defining factor within a category of people that is, determin that is determinative and students of every race, color, religion, and identity are valued and celebrated. Students, um, students are celebrate, uh, excuse me, equity requires accurate lessons in American history, discarding cookie cutter education models, recognizing that children thrive when we use specialized hand on learning, teaching honesty in our history and engaging our community to build strong communities and providing a top education to all of our children, no matter their zip code, no matter their background. Equity and academic rigor are not mutually exclusive. Both are required to create world-class citizens. All right, thank you. And question for Director District D. Um, similarly, we will start in the middle with Ms. Gibbons. In your current place of work or volunteer service, how do you ensure that wrongs of historic inequities are addressed, such as gender discrimination and racism? Sure. In your current place of work or volunteer service, how do you ensure that wrongs of historic inequities are addressed, such as gender discrimination and racism? Sure. <laughs> okay. In your current place of work or volunteer service, how do you ensure that, wrong, that the wrongs of historic inequities are addressed, such as gender discrimination and racism? Okay, so I am a doctor of audiology and my volunteer work is the president of the board at Heritage Heights Academy and I also do a lot of work with my church. Um, as far as historic inequities go, I don't personally feel responsible for the choices that anyone else has made but myself. I look at others and think that they are responsible for their choices. I don't look at someone and say, because you have these immutable characteristics, you are responsible for those that came before you. You're responsible for the clothes you chose, for the face that you have, if you're smiling or not for the words you choose, for the actions that you do. Are you a peaceable person? Are you a, a, what type of person are you? Those are the judgments that I make. I ensure that I treat everyone with respect. I am a very kind person, and those are the things that I do to ensure everybody gets respect from me. I'm responsible for my choices, and, I'm, and I will judge you according to your choices. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Bates. Thank you. Um, during our time um, on the board, we, are, we have addressed the historic inequities that are happening, especially due to um, race. During that time, I believe um, we are trying to teach our teachers, have our teachers learn to accept their, to learn about their implicit biases. Um, and I also think that we trust and I trust the teachers that we hire. We hire teachers to teach and I expect them to teach an actual, an actual history, an accurate history. So I believe that's what we need to do in that. So in terms of gender discrimination, I want to say that I believe we need to accept students for who they are and how they present themselves to um, the public around them. I encourage groups in our schools and I encourage hiring people. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Navarro. Yeah, okay. Hello. So Thanks. I have served um, a group of moms, teen moms, that uh, in my community that I just have loved and I love mentoring them. We actually never talk about, um, you know, about things, about historic things that can hold them back. We, I, I find it most valuable to speak life into situations. I think that the mouth, you know, has has the power of life and death. And 
um, in in mentoring moms and, and the, as they parent, as they you know they're marginalized, they're single parents, they're teens, they're young. Um, we speak to to the opportunities that they have, the the changes in in their stories that they can make. We um, honor the the story that they came from, whether it's trauma, whether it's um, you know anything like that. And we we look at it, but we look forward at to at to what we can change and how much beautiful life can be. So I don't like focusing on on things that hold us back. I think there's a lot of future to look at. Okay. All right, these are gonna be the final individual questions. Um, before we summarize at the end, I am gonna start with Director District D on this side. We'll start at the end with Ms. Navarro. This question is, what do you think is the greatest challenge in the Cherry Creek School District regarding special education? And what is your role in contributing to the solution? So what's the greatest challenge regarding special education and what is your role in contributing to the solution? Okay, if I could talk about currently, the greatest challenge right now to special education is are the stories that I keep hearing from parents who are advocating for their kids to have to be included in 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 uh, classroom activities, uh, but because of exemption or or whether it's any sort of, of issues, they are, are being isolated. I think currently right now that aspect is hindering our, our special education um, and our special needs community, and I think that's a problem. Uh, my, my daughter is, has an IEP, and I've, I've noticed that during the pandemic, they, she has just, her work, her, her work, her heart for her work has just gone down so much. And I just really feel that if we were able to individualize what, what we, how we approached them and, and how we supported them, I think it could be a really beautiful thing. And, and honestly, her, her heart changed a lot when these, this mask mandate came into play. And I think that that has been really terrible. Okay, Ms. Gibbons. So I have many friends with children with special needs and they're, they're my favorite people and, I, and it breaks my heart to hear that they can't get either identified or can't get the services they need. For the most part, especially Black Forest Hills Elementary School that's near my home, they do an amazing job. Um, they should be touted, I mean, the people who have children with special needs die to go to that school because the, the children are so well taken care of. So I don't know that the district, um, I mean, it's excelling in that area. But I know of a lot of people, just like Ms. Navarro said, there are people who struggle getting their child identified. Um, and my role in that, uh, just like at Heritage Heights Academy, it's, it's hard to fill those IEPs and it's hard, it's hard on teachers, it's hard on support staff, and it's hard on principals. It's hard on parents, it's, it's a tricky situation. So to find that balance and to find the support needed and to find the money that's needed to, to get those extra staff and those, those extra. Okay, thank you, Ms. Bates. Thank you. Um, I believe the um, greatest challenge right now for special ed is, first of all, we have a lack of teachers and a lack of paraprofessionals. Trying to find paraprofessionals who will work for us for the amount of money that is offered to them is one of our toughest um, what jobs at this point. I believe that is our hardest and keeping those teachers. And also, um, my role in this would be to um, advocate for students to be able to get address their needs as well as advocating the state level to get funding for um, more funding for our students more funding for all of our students but especially for students who have special needs all right thank you and the final question for director district e how have you engaged with the district or your child's school to create equity and inclusion for all students. So how have you engaged with the district or your child's school to create equity and inclusion for all students? We will start with Dr. Lester. Essentially, it's very important that I be present and that everyone in our community is present. We have to, instead of having the door open from we, we must have the door open from the outside and let everyone come in and let everyone know what role it is that they play in making things more acceptable. And essentially for me, being a black man, 
when it comes to uh, equity, I need to be present in the school. I need to let folks know that I'm there. And I want everybody, regardless of the skin color that it is that you have, to be present. And I want everyone to know that we're going to be inclusive and not exclusive. And I think the best way that we do that is by reminding people that we are all here to achieve the same goals, and we want all of our kids to win. And basically, we're going to be inclusive and not exclusive. Thank you, and now pass it to Mr. Leach. Yeah, my, my opinion on that is there's, there's a lot of doom and gloom right now, even tonight, in the, in the gender and in the, in the equity uh, conversations. And I'm kind of here to try to say, and, and, and again, in my, in my orbit, it's not all that bad sometimes. It's actually pretty good. I, I, I can sit here and I, I look at a, at a woman and, and, I, and, I, and I look at a black man and I don't see the, I don't see, similar to where I work at, I don't see issues daily, all day long about gender and gender and equity issues. I, I think there's a, a lot of good that has come out of, out of all these years of, of, uh, of how the district has done. And it's, it's equated into the workforce. The workforce is actually a pretty good place to work, a, a, a pretty diverse place and a place that I can go and, and, and be myself and everybody else can go and be themselves. So that, that would be my, my opinion on that. All right, thank you. And Ms. Allen. Uh, in preparation for the, this um, running for the school board, I have engaged in amazing conversations um, surrounding equity engage and engagement with so many members of our community. But as I've also participated in the district level past meetings um, over the past year, as well as before that, the district accountability committee meetings and the school accountability committee meetings that I run. We focus on what's going on in equity in terms of our learning gaps and how we have to improve those gaps. So that's at the forefront of my mind every day. We cannot have a 15 point learning gap just based on the color of a child's skin. There is no excuse for that and we can do better. We have to do better. I, and, uh, and, and we have to have these conversations openly. And I, I don't think that putting our heads in the sand is going to get us there. All right. So I'd like a round of applause for all of the candidates from the battery of questions that they have taken this evening. We are going to close up. Each candidate will have two minutes to offer their closing comments for the evening. I'll give them just a few minutes to kind of gather those for themselves. And then as we started earlier today, where did I start? I started down there. I started with Ms. Navarro. We'll start down at the end and, and move our way down. So when you're ready. Yep. Um, so closing comments. I... I have enjoyed the the talk of of equity and diversion and uh, uh, diversity, but I I'm sorry, but I'm I'm sitting here and I I've I am struggling with this thing. I've I've sent a letter trying to tell talk about the cultural issues that I've gone through with being abused and I, I can't really think in this space and I'm so sorry I can't offer more and that's because I'm here for choice guys not everybody has the same background and this equity work that we're doing it really needs to be applicable to all and I, I, I hear it but I don't see it and I don't see the advocation that we're talking about that we do it for people because I, I can't even gather my thoughts because of the amount of of trauma that I'm having to sit through. So I'm I wish I could say more about about that. I wish I wish I wasn't so distracted with with this. But I will close by saying I think it's important to have families be able to advocate for their kids and be at the forefront of of the conversation. I I agree that 
with Bill Leach when he talked about having the teachers union have a voice and it, it really should be the parents. I feel strongly about that. I feel too often um, the, the board and the school lean more on what uh, every other department says versus what the parents are saying and asking for. So um, with my last 20 minutes, I just want to say that I hope that the diversity, inclusion, and equity work actually does work for all because I, I, I'm disappointed. Thank you. All right, Ms. Gibbons. In closing, Cherry Creek School District does many things well, but we have some serious problems that we've never had before. Our district is divided. Not only are we struggling to close the achievement gap that we've had for decades, but we have hot political topics being discussed in classrooms and teacher trainings that don't sit well with our students, our teachers, and our parents. I'm not backed by a teacher's union or a political party. I, the only person I'm aligning myself is with Bill Leach since we have similar values and opinions about education and community. It's time for a change in Cherry Creek. It's time to close that achievement gap. It's taken decades to, to focus on it and we still have it. It's also time to heal the wounds of the, pan the pandemic. We have academic deficits. We have social and emotional deficits. It's time to look around at models that have closed the achievement gaps, like the model used at Heritage Heights Academy, where we boast 54% minority, and in some classes have 100% of, uh, of the children that, t that test per per proficient or above, as I mentioned before. As a former teacher and from my work at HHA, if elected at Cherry Creek, as a board member, my work would not only be focused on helping our children, I would like to focus on a three-part collaboration between parents, teachers, and kids, because we all know how much our kids love our teachers, and we all know how much our teachers went through last year and are continuing to struggle. It's important to recognize that our teachers went through a pandemic too. They're not only teachers, they're mom and dads. And they are loved ones, they are coaches, and they are putting, we are putting a lot of responsibility on them. I would love to serve on this board and be an advocate for teachers, for parents, and for kids. I feel like so many parents come to me and say that there has not been enough communication with the district. If you ask any parent who has attended HHA, and I've been a board member for six years, they, can, they will tell you that I've answered every email and treated them respectfully and as individuals. Thank you. Okay, Mrs. Bates. Thank you. Um, I am passionate about the serving the whole child, all learners. I had five children who have attended Cherry Creek schools. All five of them had a very different learning style. Each one required different learning techniques, special ed, up to gifted and talented. So I, am, I advocate for them. I also am in, impassioned about gender identity and gender. I have had experience with students in our very own district who have come to our home and have said some have had their parents kick them out. We need to provide an area where these children can feel safe. And if that means that a teacher has a flag hanging in their classroom, then so be it. Those children need a place and a person they can come to where they feel safe. Equity work, we need to continue on our equity work. We need to continue to close that achievement gap. I am committed to my own journey. I have attended, again, Beyond Diversity, and I will continue my journey. I know that I have more work to do, but I am um, passionate about that. I will continue to support the values of the 70-year tradition of Cherry Creek Schools. I want to ensure that each student has a safe, they are safe, healthy, supported, engaged, and challenged in our schools. And that means having our children be able to choose their own pathway of purpose to the, to the, for the rest of their life. Thank you. And I, well, sorry, I okay. You guys, no, you got 10 seconds. No, it turned off. Uh-oh. Hey, okay, I'm asking for your vote. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you, Ms. Bates. We'll move over here now to Dr. Lester. A 38-year-old black man, proud autism dad, educator, and community social worker, I decided to run for the Cherry Creek School Board simply because tomorrow does start with us today. I want all students to have better opportunities in life, 
regardless of their parents' political party affiliation, econ socioeconomic status, race, sexual preference, religious beliefs, gender, gender expression, or impairment. Therefore, I will fight to eliminate all external and internal barriers to learning for students, parents, faculty, and staff through day-to-day -day advocacy, day-to-day -day strategy, and day-to-day -day consensus building, primarily in situations that feature dissenting opinions. As a community of diverse backgrounds, we must collectively and unapologetically safeguard the existing excellence that resides within the Cherry Creek School District. Therefore, the policies that I will prioritize are equity. I will make sure that we strengthen our faculty and staff recruitment and retention efforts of all backgrounds in general and diverse backgrounds specifically. There will be enhanced finance monitoring. We will get a return on investment on all contracts. And essentially, if we do not get that return on investment, we will no longer contract with the contractor. We will have cultural respect. It's important that we see each other and recognize each other for who we are. We're all brothers and sisters trying to do our best. Community connections. Basically, we need to have some extra help for people that are needing mentoring and support, going through emotional issues. And lastly, care management. I believe that folks, we can sometimes navigate the issues if we focus on care management and have committed professionals there to help people navigate rough patches. Vote for Jason Lee. Thank you, Mr. Lester and Mr. Leach. Uh, thank you. Um, just to conclude, I have no axe to grind. I have no, I'm not doing bidding of any, any outside groups. I'm, again, just a grassroots candidate, a dad, six kids with, with, uh, with some time to spend and, and on, this, on this board. And, and I did want to touch on one of the things I didn't earlier, just with, through the questions, and that's the, you know, the security of the, of the students. That, that three-pronged attack of the, of the on-site security, the school resource officers, and the new and improved mental health aspect of, of our district. It's all going to work in conjunction, and it's all going to work, and, and, and I believe it's all going to work very, very well. Uh, the school resource officers, some of those contracts have been signed. Uh, I believe the uh, Aurora schools are going to have a few less than they, they normally did, but it's still going to be um, a very well-staffed group. The Greenwood Village group has signed a contract too to be able to to add to that as well. So uh, again, just to conclude, I am a results and solutions oriented person. I have a, a background in production agriculture, construction, and operations in IT. So I do have the resolve to, to roll up my sleeves and go to work. I have said it before, I, I've become super impressed with Director Garland and I think she needs a real advocate on the board to work with her, and I believe I'm that candidate. So please uh, vote for Bill Leach, School Board, District E. Thank you. All right, and Mrs. Allen. I've heard a lot about transparency and accountability lately. I think we all have. I've even talked about it myself. But accountability is a two-way street. Street. Historical data posted on the district's website shows that since 2014 through the August 2021 meeting, the average number of parents and community members making comments at the board meeting is 6.9 people per meeting. As a reminder, the school district serves 55,000 kids and 300,000 people. If we don't show up, we cannot later say that the board is not acting with accountability. I am running for Cherry Creek School District Board of Education to expand our legacy of excellence and stand strong for all of our students, families, teachers, and staff. I believe in our commitment to excellence, future forward and pathways of purpose. We, we must fulfill our promises to excellence by retaining a diverse teacher workforce so students see themselves in their leaders. We must make sure that all of our children are given the opportunity to achieve their excellence. I know the struggles our students and families in CCSD face. While we are proud to live in CCSD, there's more work to do in order to ensure all of our students, no matter their background, no matter their zip code, have an opportunity for a world-class education as they become our future innovators, entrepreneurs, and leaders of tomorrow. My name is Kristen Allen. I hope to earn your trust and your vote in this critical election. Thank you. 
All right, that concludes our uh, questions for this evening. Round of applause. I want to thank you all who are in attendance tonight for your attention and a desire to make an informed decision. Thank you to the candidates for their time and willingness to en engage with voters over such an important decision. Thank you to the staff, the administrators, the teachers, and all other staff who are here, as well as parents and community members. Um, I want to remind you that these forums are being recorded and will be posted on the website tomorrow um, the, after each event. Have a good night and remember to vote. Thank you. <laughs>